Hi, I'm Dr. Morris from the Flores Peak Institute, Department of Sports Medicine. Today we're here to talk about adhesive capsulitis, also known as a frozen shoulder. Typically, there's any type of trauma to the shoulder can result in an inflammation or a swelling which causes bleeding into the shoulder joint. When bleeding occurs, just like you get anywhere, you'll get a clear fluid that forms like over a cut, which will then turn into scab and that will actually harden. The same thing can happen inside the body. So you can get a inflammation or a tear of the capsule or the joint in the shoulder from any type of trauma that will then result in a bleeding into the joint which will result in scarring and just like in order to raise your arm up overhead you need to have this um, shirt be allowed to stretch and open and then when you bring the arm back down the shirt folds up into multiple folds to allow it to lay by your side the joint capsule around the shoulder joint has the same type of effect so if there's bleeding down here and this scars together and I try to raise my arm up all of a sudden I can't get my arm all the way up and that's the clinical classic sign for a frozen shoulder in addition to pain with overhead activity is you'll notice that you're losing motion this way you won't be able to get your hand up behind your back and going forward or out to the side you'll start having limited motion so this is what we're here to talk about today. The cause can be um, status post breast surgery, it can be status post tendonitis in the shoulder from too much lifting, it can be status post fall or injury, any kind of trauma that causes bleeding in the shoulder can cause this. So now let's talk about how we wanna manage it. The first thing we wanna do is stop the offending activity. So if we're doing a lot of heavy lifting overhead and that causes the shoulder to flare up and start limiting the motion, the first thing we want to do is stop doing those activities that are causing it to flare up. Next, we want to focus on getting that motion back. So imagine that you have a piece of paper and that you fold it in half and we put Elmer's glue on it and we hold it shut. Now, in order to get a frozen shoulder to unfreeze, what we're doing is we're trying to peel the two pieces of paper apart without tearing the paper. So this has to be done carefully and delicately so as to not rip the paper. If you take too long, the glue has too much time to dry and it freezes up and it's really hard to get the shoulder to unfreeze. If you do it too fast, you rip the paper and every time you rip the paper is ripping the capsule in the shoulder, it causes more bleeding and it causes it to scar back down. So finding that balance is the key to the motion. So the first exercise that we're gonna do are called table slides. So you can do this one of two ways. You can take your arm and put it on a smooth surface like a counter or like a tabletop, and you're going to do abdomen exercises. So if you're sitting down at your table, you would rest your forearm on the table and you would just gently slide your arm away from you. You're not raising or lifting the arm. You don't have to use these muscles, so it shouldn't be strenuous. It would just be a matter of sliding the arm away. If your arm doesn't slide on the table, putting it on a dish towel or a cloth placemat will allow it to slide much smoother so you're not having to push so hard and that's what you do then you would slide the arm forward as far as you can tolerate until you feel it really pulling and then you would just slowly rest there for five seconds and slide back you would repeat these exercises at least ten times in each direction going up and back and then each time you would try to reach a little bit further on a scale from one to ten ten being hey, this is too much pain, I've never felt pain like this before, and one being no pain at all, and five being the transition between, hey, it was uncomfortable, now it's officially painful, you wanna stop when it gets to a four, right at that, it's very uncomfortable, but not painful yet. That's when you wanna stop. So as you're sliding forward, you'll get to that two, three, four, you might feel a light grimace, and then okay, it's time to start moving back before it gets painful. We don't wanna rip the tissue, we just wanna gently stretch it. And as we repeatedly do that, we're gonna see that tissue slowly over time get better and better and better. The other one you're gonna start is the same exercise, only we're gonna go sideways now. So you're gonna start here and you're gonna just slowly let the arm go out to the side. And again, you can do this sitting at a table or you can do it standing, but this is the easiest way to kind of get that motion back. So you're trying to recreate first this motion here, and that's the forward, and then the second exercise is gonna get this motion back here. 
The next exercises we call the doorknob exercises. They're the simplest way to get these exercises back. You can grab a hold of either a doorknob or a counter. It should be about the height of your elbow when you're sitting or standing. In this case, the counter is almost a perfect height. So what I will do is I will stand and put my hand on the counter like this. And I will just relax my hand here and just slowly, gently walk my arm further and further away to stretch the front of the joint capsule out. And I'm going to stretch that again until I get to that certain level. And some people, it might start off right here. Others, it might be here, depending on how tight the capsule is. The goal is to just gently stretch it back this way. One of the things that I haven't mentioned yet is that typically it takes three to six months minimum for this to completely recover if it hasn't been very long. So our goal is not to gain 10 degrees a day, it's to gain approximately one degree each day by doing the exercises two or three times a day. So if you don't see dramatic improvement immediately, don't get discouraged and don't expect that something's gonna change. It should be something you just gently realize is gonna take a little bit, little bit, little bit, and over the course of a month, if you go from being able to raise your arm to here all the way up to here, that's a big improvement. And over two to three months, you'll definitely see a marked improvement in your pain and in your function. The fourth exercise is what we call the internal rotation, and that's the other doorknob exercise. So you can either grab a hold of a doorknob or a counter about the same height, and you'll grab it, but rather than grab it palm up like we did here, we're gonna grab it palm down this way. As you do that, you're gonna slowly start to try to walk the arm behind your back. And you just either have your hand on the doorknob or hand on the counter and just gently squeezing and you just kind of slowly see if you can't move that arm as far around behind your back. When you start, you might be doing good just to get it to your hip. Then you might be getting good to get it to your back pocket. And eventually you'll get it to the middle of your back. Once you get it to the middle of your back, the next goal is to do gentle squats and bring that arm up so that you can slowly reach your arm further and further up your back. And that allows you to do is be able to eventually get your arm back up to where you can hook a bra in the back, you can tuck a shirt, you can get your wallet out of your back pocket, and you can use the restroom. These are all exercises that are gonna require enough internal rotation to do that. So those are the four main exercises for starting off with frozen shoulder. Other treatment options for frozen shoulder, if you feel like it's not progressing or the pain is too severe, is to come in and see us here at the Floor Orthopedic Institute, and we'd be happy to try an intra-articular or inside the joint shot of an anti-inflammatory with a numbing medicine. That'll help to fill the joint with fluid, which stretches the capsule out from the inside. It numbs up the capsule so it's not as painful, and it adds an anti-inflammatory, which will give you several months of limited inflammation which will decrease the pain, allow the pain to settle down quicker and allow you to help stretch and get that motion back. If that doesn't seem to get the pain in a fast enough recovery mode for you, then other options would be to do an arthroscopic surgery where we slowly release the scarred capsule and stretch the shoulder out while you're asleep to get all your motion back and then start your informal physical therapy. Again, if the exercises that you're doing at home aren't enough, we can always do physical therapy first or the injection or surgery down the road. But if you start off with these while you're waiting to get in to see us, then at least you'll be headed in the right direction in the meantime. Once again, this is Dr. Adam Morris, Sports Medicine Department of the Florida Beacon Institute. Thank you very much for tuning in and hope we can get your shoulder symptoms feeling better.